The Warriors versus the Kings, yet again, in the winner go home situation, yet again. There was a game seven that happened in the last NBA playoffs where Stephen Curry lit the beam and set a NBA record, 50 points in a game seven. Now we have the play-in tournament. This is the scenario that's about to go down on Tuesday. The ninth seed, Sacramento Kings, for the 10th seed, the Golden State Warriors. At the Golden One Center, we have another home game, which is giving me PTSD because the last time we played Steph Curry in a home game, win or go home situation, we get 50 on us. But let's say the Sacramento Kings and Perfect World win that game. We then play the loser of the Los Angeles Lakers and the New Orleans Pelicans. I think the Lakers are gonna win that game, and let's say you beat the Warriors. We then play the New Orleans Pelicans, who are 5-0 against us. Felt to ass. So back to the Warriors and Kings matchup. I'm gonna give you guys everything you need to know. The four matchups this season, there's been an average of 2.7 point differential. The first time we played them, we lost by eight points. Game two, lost by one. Game three, won by one. And game four, won by one. Tied two and two going in Tuesday's play-in tournament. We don't have Malik Monk. We don't have Kevin Hurt. I'm gonna harp on those two points in a little bit. Let's go over the players and their stats in this series. This season, Steph Curry's averaging 31, six and four on 53 and 46 shooting splits. But he is averaging four turnovers per game, which is very good for us because we like to get in transition. If we can force Steph Curry to throw four turnovers, we have a great chance of winning that game. If he takes care of the ball, his assist to turnover ratio was, let's say four to one, or cooked, because we thrive on turnovers. Klay Thompson is averaging 17, four and two on the season series against Sacramento Kings, 44 and 33 shooting splits in a perfect world. I would hope Klay Thompson beats us. Actually, he gave us 60 on 11 dribbles. Draymond Green is huge in this series because we saw what happened in the playoff series last year where he and Kevon Looney limited Demonte the bonus immensely. The thing about Draymond Green is it's not even a stat. In every game he's played, he's been a plus five and a plus minus charge, which means in games that are won or lost by one, two, three, four points, and he's a plus five, when he's on the court, they have a great chance of winning those close games. Don't forget that. Those are the three primarily I want to focus on the Golden State Warriors side. Let's move to the Sacramento Kings side where we have Demonte the bonus, who's averaging 17, 11, and nine, while shooting 51% from the field. But on the season, he's shooting 59% from the field. So like I said, against the Golden State Warriors, they magnify his game so much. I feel like they make him think a little too much on the offensive end to where it could hinder our offensive ability. I will say this though, we do have De'Aaron Fox, who has been playing exceptionally well against Stephen Curry and the Golden State Warriors this season. Averaging 32, five and five, shooting 50% from the field and 42% from three. The thing about De'Aaron I actually like in this series is that game seven, he didn't play very well at home. I'm thinking he's thinking of that in the back of his mind going into this winner go home situation here And I know we're gonna see a De'Aaron Fox masterclass on offense and defense who he is tied by the way For the most steals per game, which his steals aren't passing lane steals. It's on ball 94 feet steals Which translates in my opinion to an NBA all defensive team Which makes him a super max player because this is his contract extension year I believe in our starting lineup. We also have Keegan Murray, Keon Ellis But the most important player in this lineup come Tuesday is Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes has has been playing lights out against the Golden State Warriors, averaging 19 points and three rebounds. Shooting 60% from the field and 54% from three against his former team to send the Golden State Warriors back across that bridge. What better way than Harrison Barnes having a master class performance against the Golden State Warriors? I will say this though, uh, I think it was about game three or game four last year where he just said F what the coach drew up and took his own hero shot against the Golden State Warriors and that lost us the game. Dan, could have lost us the series. So I just hope he plays well and when it comes down to crunch time, we give the ball to De'Aaron Fox and Harrison, you get out the way. Unless you have like 30 points, Harrison. Still get out the way. <laughs> now I want to move on to my final points here. We have no Malik Monk, no Kevin Herter, which hurts us a lot. But Malik Monk actually didn't play the best against the Golden State Warriors in the four games that he did play. He had two good games and two not so good games. But I will say this though, missing Malik Monk in these moments, we're missing that other player additional to De'Aaron Fox to go get us a bucket. Because right now, all we really have to go get us a legit bucket is kind of De'Aaron. So it's kind of like a lot of pressure on him. But I love it. That's what we're paying him the big bucks for. Also, not a benefit to the Kings. The Golden State Warriors have a full roster, fully healthy roster. Out of the last 12 games, the Warriors have won 10, which is alarming because in the basketball world, you want to gel at the right moment, like an NCAA tournament. If you're gelling going into the tournament and you're playing your best basketball going into March, you have a good chance of winning. If you're playing your best basketball going into the end of April in the NBA, like the Dallas Mavericks, pretty damn good basketball if you ask me. The Kings, on the other hand, our last 12, we won five. Two of the last seven. A lot of those games, we blew double digit leads. But the good thing about us not keeping a lead is the Golden State Warriors actually don't keep leads just like we blow leads. So it's gonna be the battle of the lead blowers. Who can keep the lead the longest? I pray it's us. I can't deal with Warrior fans, Dev.
Devin Williams, yeah, I'm talking directly to you, brother. You better hope we don't win Tuesday. Don't block that call when I make that call to you. If we lose, though, don't call me, though. Now, my last point here, this is a minute point. I personally, no disrespect, do not want to see any Duarte minutes. If we are going to think about giving Chris Duarte rotational minutes, insert Colby Jones. I think we get a better output with Colby on the floor, more energy than what Chris Duarte can offer for us. Although Chris Duarte plays defense, but so does Colby Jones. So if we're thinking about playing Chris Duarte, play Colby Jones instead. Well, that's all you guys need to know. Tuesday's huge for the culture. This is Sacramento versus the Bay. Sacramento is not the Bay. Everybody wants to think that we want to be the Bay. No, 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 no. We are the capital of California. After Tuesday, if we lose, check on me. Sayonara, trio. Throw me into the galaxy.